Hello, everyone. And if you don't know me, my name is Nathan Fu. And yes, you do spell my last name as F-U. I'm sorry if I offended anyone. I thought it would be on there, but I guess not. But yeah. So if you actually know me or if you see my bio on Facebook, you probably know that I'm not the most qualified person to give a TED Talk. You know, I'm not really inspirational. I'm not really motivational. And I'm not really a good public speaker. So why am I giving a TED Talk? Or how did I even hear about this? I have, my really good friend, Harika Kathy, told me that there, there was going to be a TED Talk at school. And no offense to my other friends, but she's one of my smartest friends. So I didn't really want to sound dumb in front of her. So I said, OK, sure, yeah, cool. But I had no idea what a TED Talk was. I actually thought a TED Talk was like a celebrity making a puppet named TED Talk. And after looking it up on YouTube, I was clearly wrong. The first TED Talk video I saw was given by Kid Cudi. And if you don't know who he is, he's this really, really good rapper from like 2007, 2008. And he was basically the original Travis Scott. And watching this TED Talk video made me so inspired and so pumped that I did my homework for the entire week that day. I really even do homework, so that was a pretty big deal for me. And I thought to myself, wouldn't it be cool if I gave a TED Talk and kind of make everyone else feel the same way Kid Cudi made me feel? But then I realized something. The people who gave TED Talks, they were, either really, they were either really rich, they were famous, they had great accomplishments in their life. And I'm none of those things yet. So then I brainstormed, what do I have that these people who gave TED Talks, what do I have that they don't have? And I realized, for a pretty normal guy who doesn't really have much in his life, I'm pretty happy and satisfied with who I am. But isn't, it wasn't easy for me to get here. And life is really, really difficult. And it sounds really cliche, but it's true. No matter who you are or what you do, there's always going to be this difficult stretch in your life. And, this hardest, and the hardest part in life is believing in yourself. Believing in yourself that you could go past this difficult stretch. For me, my difficult stretch was finding out who I am and accepting it. Life is kind of like buying a prom dress. When you're buying a prom dress, you have to try out a lot of dresses to find the perfect one. The first dress, the color might not be right. The second one, maybe the pattern's ugly. The third one, maybe this is fit. And the fourth one, it just might be plain ugly. So just go on and on and on until you find the right prom dress. And it's kind of like life, too. You have to try out a lot of things in life until you find the right fit for you. The first prom dress I tried on was back in ninth grade. In ninth grade, I wanted to become a basketball player. And I know I look, I, I'm pretty short, and I can't really jump, and I'm that fast. But I'm actually pretty good at basketball. Um, for those seniors who went to senior picnic yesterday, they can attest to that. I beat everyone in horse, so that was pretty cool. But then I was so into basketball that I got myself, like a, I got myself a job as an assistant coach for the Y-Bells girls basketball team. Sounds kind of lame, but it was pretty cool. And what, there was one girl on the team who was pretty tall. She was almost taller than me, actually. So she challenged me to play one-on-one. -on -one. And I, I did this really, really good move on her. I crossed her over, and I was about to shoot. But then I underestimated how fast and long she was. So then she blocked me. And she blocked me pretty hard. Like, she blocked me so hard that it was kind of hard for me to fake that I literally blocked me on purpose. And the whole team was laughing. I think the coach was laughing. I think the principal was there, and she was laughing too. So it was kind of embarrassing. So I realized that maybe basketball wasn't a thing for me. So that in the summer of 10th grade, I decided that I wanted a girlfriend. You know, I'm tired of being single. I'm tired of being single. I'm tired of crying at night by myself. So then I was like, maybe I should get a, girl, get a, girl, get a girlfriend. But then I'm not, the I'm not the best looking guy out there. So then I decided to start working out. So I went to Walmart and bought a dumbbell. And I wanted to start low. So I bought a five pound dumbbell. And I went home. I did a lot of crazy exercises for like two hours, three hours. And I woke up the next day, and I wasn't even sore at all. So either I thought I was either really strong, or I started a bit too low. So then I went back to Walmart, returned the five-pound dumbbell, so I got my money back, and decided to buy a new dumbbell. I was going to buy like maybe 15 pounds or 10 pounds. But then while I was there, there were like two cute girls at the weight section. So I just grabbed the heaviest dumbbell, <laughs> which was 20 pounds. And 20 pounds might seem light to some people, but it was so heavy for me. Like, I was smiling on the outside while carrying it, but I was crying inside. Like, I was praying for them to leave so I could, like, drop the dumbbell down. I, I wanted to switch back to a lighter dumbbell, but I already made up my mind. I'm going to go hard. So I bought a 20-pound dumbbell, but I had to get it out of the store first. If, you, if you've ever been to Walmart, the Walmart near Home Depot, the waste section is at the opposite end of the cashier. So 
I had to carry the dumbbell with two hands all the way across the store. But I stopped midway because it was just way too heavy for me. So I put the dumbbell in the middle of the store, went out, grabbed the shopping cart, went back in, <laughs> put the dumbbell on the shopping cart, and checked out. And when I got back home, I was so sore. Like, I had no energy to work out. So I went, I went to sleep. And the next day when I woke up, I was still sore. And I was like, why am I sore? I didn't even work out yesterday. And I realized the reason why I was sore was because of carrying the dumbbell around Walmart. So <laughs> maybe working out isn't my thing. In the senior year, I thought to myself, maybe I'm trying too hard to fit in. Maybe I'm trying too hard to find that prom dress. Maybe I'm not even supposed to wear a prom dress. You know, I'm a guy, so I'm supposed to be wearing a tux. And it was just kind of hard for me to accept that I'm not meant to wear a prom dress. You know, I'm an outlier. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to give a TED Talk today, to let everyone know that it's OK to feel weird about yourself. It's OK to feel uncomfortable with yourself. And it's OK to feel like you don't belong in this world. It's a normal phase that a lot of people go through. And it's also a normal phase that's going to be over in a bit. But it's only going to be over once you start accepting who you are and living your life. The song that I played in the beginning of my TED Talk was called Wicked by a rapper named Future. And the reason why I played that song was because Future's a good rapper, and that's a good song. But another reason why I played that song was because Future kind of went through the same problem as I did. Now, he's really rich, and I'm really poor. But then, <laughs> but then Future, early on in his career, he wanted to fit in with the musical world. So he started making pop music. But pop music wasn't really his thing. I'm a big Future fan, but the music he made back then was terrible. Like, even I wouldn't listen to it. <laughs> and he realized that, too. So he went back to the music he grew up on, which is this um, grimy, I think, ghetto R&B, I mean, hip hop. And he got a lot of criticism for doing that. I know a lot of people in this audience who doesn't like Future, and including my mom right there. She <laughs> doesn't like it when I play Future at home. But then, by like going back to this music he grew up on, he felt comfortable with, him, with himself. And more importantly, he was making the people around him the people who actually accepted him for who he really is, who he really is happy. And that's, in the end, that's what's most important. And I think that kind of applies back to me, too. All throughout my life, I was a horse trying to be a zebra. You can paint a horse black and white stripes all you want. It might look like a zebra, but it's still a horse in the end. And it took me a really long time to realize this simple fact that you can't change what can't be changed. And then one final reason why I gave this TED Talk was for my sister right there. Um, she's in eighth grade right now, and she's going to be in high school next year. So I kind of want to leave like a good legacy for her. Um, I thought she was watching the last show, so I gave the shout out in the last show, but it turns out she wasn't there. So <laughs> now she's here, so I'm going to give her a shout out. Um, I want people, when people ask her, hey, it's Nathan Fu, that weird, crazy kid. Is he your brother? I don't want her to be like, uh, yeah. I want her to be like, yeah, that weird, crazy kid. Yeah, he's my brother. And I think that's it. Um, I wanted to do a mic drop, because that seems pretty cool, but I'm wearing this. So I can't really do that, so I'm just going to walk off the stage in a cool way. Just really going to walk off. <laughs> <laughs>